everyone this is Gail from Gail Julie Makes I'm here with another video for Fairy Stamper I hope you're all well and you've had some crafting time so this is going to be my design today using um, the fairy hug stamps I've laid it out with the acetates just to show you what it's going to look like so we're using the heron the mini frog the leafy canoe and the moon tree and what we're going to do today is we're going to be building on the moon tree by um, turning it into a cherry blossom so we're going to be using um, a lot of the products that you can see in shot here we're going to be using some acrylic paints we could use the spray um, I've just laid out a few and, and then we've got um, 3D pearl effects if you wanted to I don't use all of these products in this one but just to give you an idea of what you could use and we're also going to be doing a bit of embossing as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I made the background um, I will remove the acetate so let's just take those off and then I'll show you how I did the background um, I didn't actually record this, but I did, um, I, I had this lying around and I thought it was perfect for this one. So what I've got for the background is a, um, I used a six by six inch gel plate and I've brayed on the distressing you can see at the top there, which is wild honey, brayed that onto my actual gel plate and then I've added brushos over the top. So you don't need too much of the distressing at all, just a, a really thin layer on your gel plate. And then I've gone in with um, the brushos, which were um, yellow. And then I used lime green. And I also used turquoise. Obviously, what I did with these was I watered them down. Um, so there's not much brusho in there at all. And then I flicked them onto the gel plate with a fan brush. Okay. So um, quite an easy background. If you need any help with those sort of backgrounds, just go on to my... Um, my channel Gail Julie makes on YouTube and you'll find more instructions on those so now I've inked up my uh, moon tree in Nocturne versus Fine Claire and I just made sure I press it down for a while because it's, it's obviously it's going on top of the brush show it's done a really nice print this one you might want to use a stamping platform I never do but um, it just shows the quality of the stamps from the fact that it's it's stamping so well especially because I got a bit of embossing powder on it a previous time now I'm using the canoe and I'm just offering up the actual stamp to the um, card just to see roughly where I want it again and again I'm going to ink this one up in Nocturne all of the stamps I am going to do in Nocturne today um, just because I think it will really make them stand out and then I'm going to do a bit of colouring over the top so I'll show you that later so I'm just making sure I've got enough. I've only used this stamp once before just to check, you know, make sure it was um, prepped properly. So I just wanted to make sure I've got plenty of ink on there to make sure I do get that really nice stamp. But um, as you can see, when I lay it down and pull it, it's it, it's done a great job considering it's only its second, second outing ever. It's only the second time I've stamped with it. So, and it's such a pretty design, the, the leafy canoe. I've never really seen a design like that before in uh, any fairy stamps that I can think of. So really pleased with that. Then I'm going in with the Nocturne again on the Heron. Um, what I'll do is I'll put a link to all of these stamps, by the way, in the description below. So you can just click on them and go straight to them in the fairy stamper store. Love Herons. This is such a pretty stamp. You, can... you could use this one in so many different pictures. I've never used this one before so again you know I wanted to make sure I got enough ink on there but again it comes out absolutely fine so really really pleased with that one okay so I'm just laying that in the corner there and then we'll um we'll use our frog stamp so uh so it's a mini frog and we're going to place that so it's looking up at the heron so again stamping up in the nocturne I've used this a few times before so I know this one's going to work really well I'm just going to get the frog sort of slightly looking up at the heron. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, when I place this one, I'm not overly happy with where I place it. And I'll show you that in a second. So can you see the root of the tree is like touching his head? I'm not really very pleased with that section there. But my idea is to cover that section up of the actual root with some acrylic paint. So I'm pointing it out now, there you go. So I'm gonna cover that up with some acrylic paint so it shouldn't be a problem later. Okay, now I'm just um, showing you a couple of stamps that I'm gonna bring in to use on the tree. I had a um, sort of like a, a sort of bubble stamp and now I've got a star stamp. These are both by Creative Expressions. Um, I don't think they're in the fairy stamp shop, but you can have a look at some of their other items there. 
Um, I'm going to emboss these these stamps. So I'm going to basically use my embossing pad to ink them up and um, you do just, just dot them about for like almost like little flower designs. You can use whatever stamps you have. You might have some little flowers you want to use, but this is just what I had lying around and I think this, this will look really nice. So um, here we go. I've not got the best um, embossing pad at the moment. It needs re-inking, but I couldn't find my re-inker annoyingly. So I'm just... Um, I'm just going to go in there and um, fill in those areas. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with my embossing powder. I've got Wow Embossing Powder. It's a purple colour. Um, you might want to just use a pink one if you've got a pink one, but this was the closest uh, colour I had. I haven't really got that many embossing powders. And I'm using my really cute little Alice in Wonderland style spoon. I'm going to sprinkle it on with that. Can't quite remember where I stamped, so I'm just putting it um, all over the place. It looks quite pretty at this stage, actually, on the uh, on the actual picture. And I've got some, remember I've stamped some on the ground, so I'm putting it below the tree as well. And I'm just tapping it off. And you'll notice some of the um, embossed powder remained on the bottom of the tree and the canoe, but I just tapped most of that off because I didn't want it. It looked nice, but I didn't want it to be too distracting. So uh, you might want to leave it on. I think it looks nice at the base of the tree, actually. Maybe I, I should have kept more at that, at that point, but... You know, it's up to you. And then I'm going to go in with my um, star stamp that I was talking about. So you might pick out flowers, stars, circles, paint splashes, dots, you know, whatever you want to use for those little, the, the sort of little flower elements of the cherry blossom. And just get a bit more with the embossing powder again. So, um, as I've said, I'll leave a link below in the description of all the products that I've used that you can get from Fairy Stamper. So you should be able to go straight to them. Um, you know, just click on the link and it should take you straight there. Okay, so I've been away. I've dried. Well, I've, I've used my heat embossing tool to dry the embossing powder. It's not come out as vibrant as, as it could have done, as I said, because of the ink pad not being that great. But... Um, yours will probably be much more vibrant, but I quite like the subtlety of it. This is the Distress, distress paint that I'm going to go in and use in a few minutes. But what I wanted to do first was just get some colouration on the tree. So I'm using um, a dye ink pad. You could use dye inks, you could use uh, watercolours, you could use Copic markers, whatever you want to actually get some colour on the stamps. Or you might want to leave the stamps as they are, that's perfectly fine. I just wanted to, you know, to make them pop a little bit more, so... I'm doing that at the moment. I will get a little bit of colour on the heron and the frog as well. So I'm going over the frog now just with a green dye ink. Um, it doesn't stand out that much, but it just, you know, just gives you a little bit of extra something. And then I'm going to go over the heron, the little gaps in the heron, like the white lines, I'm going to go over with a jelly roll pen purely because you can see the background through. So I want to make sure it's got those white highlights. This is a Sakura Jelly Roll pen. So while I'm continuing with the colouring, I just wanted to ask you, um, what do you think of the, the new Fairy Hug stamps? There's some really nice designs that have just come out. Um, I know a lot of people have been really happy with the fact they've brought out sentiments to use, so they're great for your cards, obviously. But if you want to comment below, please let me know which are your favourite new stamps. Um, obviously, if you want to take a look at them, you can go onto the uh, Fairy fairy stamper hugs page on facebook or you can um, check out their shop and just let me know let me know what your favorite stamps are in general we'd love to hear about that and um, they're always working on new designs so um, it's really exciting times at the moment for fairy hugs so um, now i'm just going in with the um i've got some of the tim holtz kitsch flamingo distress paint that i'm laying down and i've got quite a, a sort of thin brush that will give me um you know nice sort of small thin strokes on the on the cherry tree now um obviously i wanted to build up the layers um so it looks like it's actually got some depth so what i'm going to do once i've done this particular color is is blend it with a a white acrylic just to you know give me a different shade so it's all about building up the layers here 
One thing I did want to mention at this stage was that, you know, you can take um, the cherry blossom to whichever stage you want it, really. What I mean, basically, is, you know, when you're looking at this, obviously, I'm, I've spread this up a little bit for you. There might be stages um, when you think, oh, I really like the way it looked there. I have that myself as well. There's, there's stages where I wish I'd stopped and, you know, but I'm happy with my final result. So, you know, you might want to, um, you might want to leave the actual whole of the tree showing. You'll see in a minute, I do start to cover up some of the branches a little bit because I wanted to look at it to look a bit more, more, can't say my words today. I wanted it to look a bit more realistic. So, um, you know, I didn't want to just have all those branches exposed and just the tiny bits of cherry blossom here and there. I wanted to make sure it was, it was more covered than that. So, you know, you may think, okay, well, I would think I would just do it up to this point. Um, that's totally up to you. This is just a tutorial to give you an idea really. So feel free to do that. Um, if you want to, you can um, drop me a comment below to tell me sort of, you know, how you think you might do this one yourself. That'd be awesome. I love, I love chatting with you guys through the comments. Um, so here is that bit you can see where I've started to cover up the branches with the, the acrylic there. And um, if you do want to take it to this stage, then I'll just say you do, you do need quite thick acrylic over those branches because remember you're covering your stamping. And that stamping is is a permanent ink, so it's going to show through, especially because it's nocturne. So all I advise is just, you know, maybe a couple of layers just so you can't see that stamping. Um, see, for example, I think the tree looks quite nice at this stage, um, but, you know, it's I, I do love the finished piece. <laughs> it's just one of those things, isn't it? So now I'm going in with that. Um, I've added the Dina Wakely Buff Acrylic Paint just to give it... Um, a lighter shade of pink so I've mixed the two colours together basically and I'm just going over making sure I've got some of that cherry blossom falling off the trees as well so um, whilst I was waiting for the tree to dry because acrylic you know because it's a bit thicker it doesn't dry that quick um, I was just colouring in the um, flowers on the canoe with my Sakura Jelly Roll pen again in white um, I was really unsure what colours to do this to be at this bit to be honest so um, I'm not sure um, whether I should have gone for a different colour, but I was pleased with the end result, so it's entirely up to you. Just have a think about what you might use. I'm bringing in some more jelly roll pens now as well, just to get some different coloration on the canoe. So I'm going for a green. I was originally going to do copper, but you know what I'm like, I keep losing things. So I've lost my copper pen again, even though I found it. I found it last week, I think it was. And then I moved my room around again and I lost it again. So it's, it's determined to remain hidden. Um, but this, yeah, these colours look really nice. The green looks really nice, I think, on the canoe. So, you know, I'll leave that up to you, whatever colour you decide. If you want to let me know, drop drop me a comment in the messages. And obviously, if you do, do decide to recreate this tutorial, then please do share your pics on the Ferris Stamper Hugs page. Um, we'd really love to see them. So I think, I think some of my favourite stamps so far by Fairy Hugs are probably the uh, the Moon Tree. I would say um, that one and the first ever stamp by Fairy Hugs I was really attracted to is the Fireflies actually. But believe it or not, I've not actually used them yet. <laughs> so I will get round to using them. I've got an idea for what I want to do, but um, it's kind of you know. Um, it just keeps getting pushed aside at the moment to try out the other stamps that I've got. So, you know what it's like, you're always buying more and more stamps and then things kind of get in the way of what you're originally going to decide to do, with, don't they? So we keep getting those new ideas and we go with those. So now what I'm doing is I'm bringing in my Distress Ink in Kitsch Flamingo again and and you'll see that it's a slightly different shade again. It's very vibrant in the Distress Ink, really bright. Um, and I'm going to use my stamps. Well, I'm bringing in a, a different stamp, which is like a paint splodge. And um, I'm going to use that on the actual acrylic paint, which has dried now, by the way, um, just to give us those that extra sort of feeling of the fact there's like individual little flowers there. So I really like this paint splodge stamp. This again was from Creative Expressions, but you know there's lots of there's lots of them out there, so you might already have your own that you can use. And as you can see, considering it's that same colour, it's very vibrant. 
So I used a little bit of this shade and then uh, and then I decided to go in with a different colour, you know, just to give it that like depth again, really. So the next colour that I'm using now is the Monarch by Versifying Claire. So that's a really sort of nice purple shade. And what I decided to do with this one, because it is quite a, a strong purple, I wanted to do second and third generation stamping of this rather than first. So like this one here is third generation. So I'm stamping off basically once I've inked up just to make sure that, you know, I'm getting that right shade that I want. So quite often on the tree, I've done third generation. And I think this really pulls it all together. These really do look like little flowers on there and uh, look like they're sort of cascading off the trees and falling to the ground, which is which works really well. So I'm just building it up, adding more and more. Such pretty trees, aren't they? I mean, cherry blossoms and, and blossom trees in general, oh my goodness, so pretty and, and really make me feel about like, you know, that sort of time of year where, or think about that time of year when you, you know, you start getting the warm weather and you just start feeling like you're a bit human again after the winter. So lovely. Okay, so I was, I've kind of felt like I might have gone a bit too, got a bit too much of that colour on the bottom. So I thought I would go in with a Versifying Claire um, just to do a bit of grounding for the heron and the frog and the canoe and also get a little bit of a darker colour in there just to, you know, kind of calm that pink down a little bit. So I'm just tearing some paper for a mask. If you sort of tear it like it's perforated, then you get a bit of not a nicer edge. And I'm just kind of working out where I want it. And then I was pondering between Warm Breeze and Twilight in the Versifying Claire. But eventually I decided to go for the Twilight colour. And I'm just getting some on my blender and then just rubbing some off so there's not quite as much on there. I don't want it too dark. Um, and then I decided to use my mask this way around so I can blend down and then that will give us that really crisp line at the top when you when you remove that masking paper. I tend to do most of my blending downwards to be honest so I have got that really you know accented line basically. If you blend upwards then it's going to basically be more sort of um, what's the word almost like more fuzzy um, that's probably not quite what I was trying to say but um, if you, if you're more of a smudged effect, I suppose, and if you blend downwards, then you're going to get that crisp line from the actual mask itself. So I decided after I'd added a little bit, I wanted to get that, that twilight color all the way around the border. So I just started to go into my, uh, my border there. Originally I thought I was going to leave it white, but then I thought, no, let's go for some color all around the edge to really sort of make it quite striking. If I was going to do it again, I don't know. <clears throat> Would I do that again? I'm not sure. Um, I mean, you could add extra elements to it by maybe um, drawing onto the twilight. So you might use your, your Sakura Jelly Roll pen in white to add nice little details around the edge. Or you might stencil something around the edge. Or you might just leave it white. As I was filming, because um, I was watching a lot of it through the viewfinder, I'm like, I wasn't quite sure about the coloration. It was hard to quite tell um, the way I was looking at it. So I was a bit like, mm, is it standing out enough? But I think it was, to be honest. I think it's just the way it was, the way I was viewing it. But I do like the twilight all around the edge. And, um, you know, you could, if you feel like it's a bit too wide a border, you could also trim it down as well. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe it's too wide. Or maybe I should have gone back in afterwards with a... A black edging. I don't know. I I think maybe going black in black in with a black edging possibly is what I might do, or I might trim it down a bit. But as I said, I'm really happy with it. It's it's not a problem. It's just that you know I'm always thinking about like, oh, how could I do it differently? What would I do? What would I change? Um, if you're like that, let me know. Um, drop me a comment below. You know, you're always questioning your work, but um. I'm perfectly happy to have it on my mantelpiece and look at it and be pleased. 
So at this stage as well, I was thinking, do I want, you know, I was going to do a really crisp margin um, or a crisp border, but then I thought, no, I'll use the side that's torn so it looks a, a bit more jagged and it looks a bit more unusual. It's not, you know, straight. It's um, It's got a bit more a bit more of something to it because of the slight angles that it's using. Um, yeah, so, yeah, no, I am pleased with it. I am pleased with it. Maybe I could have used a different colour. <laughs> uh, no, just teasing. Um, but yeah, you could you could pick whatever you want. You might go for a purple because you think it might match the colour in the uh, blossom tree. You might go for a pink. I don't know. It's, it's entirely up to you. It'd be interesting to see, actually, if any of you do post this, uh, your versions of non fairy stamp hugs, just to see how you've done it. So don't forget as well, we have um, three videos or three, three, around three each week going up. So there's always some great new uh, video to watch or some more inspiration there for you. So this is the finished piece. Um, I did go in and add a little bit more detail off camera. So I'm just showing you that now. I went in with the white, uh, the white jelly roll pen again and I added some little squiggles on the tree just to give some elements of like maybe even more little flowers on there you, I could have used a white Posca pen actually I use my jelly roll pen I probably should have used a Posca pen to go easier over the acrylics but I think it's come out really well and I've just gone in with a bit more um of the twilight ink under the under the canoe and the heron and the frog just to give you that effect the, just to show you like the shading the fact that they've left a bit of a shadow okay so I'll just give you a nice close-up of that lovely cherry blossom so I'm really pleased that I decided to challenge myself with this idea. Um, I've been looking at the moon tree for a while and thinking, hmm, it might look nice with some uh, some leaves or some flowers on it. So I think this has worked really well. I do hope you've enjoyed it and that you'll have a go at this yourself. Um, it's always nice to bring in some extra elements to your pictures just to, you know, um, make them unique to you really so um, if you'd like to subscribe to the fairy stamper youtube channel just click that profile picture top left there and hit the bell when you're on there that will notify you when we've got new videos going up uh, there are new videos every every week bottom left is a link to another video that we think you might like and if you'd like to go over to my youtube channel it's gail julie makes um, there's lots more tutorials on there for you to look at too and please do go and check out that uh, Facebook page, Fairy Stamper Hugs, for that great sense of community. Okay, so I hope you get more crafting time in soon, and I hope you have a good week. Take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.